are here with the former chief of naval staff Vishnu Bhagwat to discuss the Russia Ukraine war uh, the news of this war has certainly thrown the world into chaos but um, if we think nato's eastward movement goes back 20 years and its presence in ukraine is visible post 2014 or the maidan coup so why did russia start military operations now it's a very good question for start but may i take a few minutes just two or three minutes to go into the background and historical background ukraine had existed as a state only after 1770 1775 though it was and has been and remains the heart of russia the culture the spirit the religion the language in what was then loosely described as kiev rus and russia is rus actually so that's that's where it started off from uh, before that it was under the ottoman empire and when the ottoman empire started weakening zarina catherine made the ukraine into a state as a part of Ra rus or russia so the ukraine is roughly the same age as a nation, as a state as the united states of america roughly almost few years apart secondly at that point of time and this is now 250 years at that point of time the nation state was more loosely defined than it is but over these years last 250 years it became a nation state with the characteristics of a, what we define as a modern nation state the after 1919 1917 october revolution in russia while well, there was a civil war etc uh ukraine was constituted as a ukraine soviet socialist republic now it's interesting to know that at the same time almost crimea was also a, what are known as a autonomous oblast oblast is region a region smaller usually smaller than a state and therefore it was never a part of ukraine as is claimed by latter by uh, today by by people by few people and i must explain here that in the context of the claims of crimea as well as the position of russia today that crimea being a oblast in 1954 skrushchev was the general secretary of the communist party of the soviet union and for administrative reasons as well as certain sentimental reasons i would say cultural and otherwise the oblast the crimean oblast was integrated into the ukraine republic so soviet socialist republic however it must be noted that russian language is common to ukrainians and crimians as well as to russia of course and ukrainians in any case are intermarried and culturally together and their intercourse is so diverse and so wide wide uh, spread that it is a bit of a paradox that ukraine should claim itself to separate from and not only separate as we will see in the course of this interview discussions that they have they have decided to find a commonality with nato which is the military arm of the us and europe against the fundamental core and security interests of russia it is i don't want to bring in any other country in this kind there is a historical uh, precedence for this kind of conduct but i don't want to be like so we've got that situation and it is in it is in 2014 that is 8 years ago that the us intelligence 
and U.S. State Department, in fact, the U.S. administration, worked for, organized a coup. It's nothing short of a coup because there was no democratic process. And we know it is called as the Maidan coup. And uh, openly, uh, factions or forces which are related to Stepan Bandera, who was a deviant in World War II and sided with all was a comprador, basically joined Germany in its Nazi offensive on the Soviet Union. But it's not simply that, it is that these forces of the Maidan coup, which are, on which reams and reams has been, has been written, were so highly organized that the successor president to Yanukovych, who was actually driven out, have, you can say on an everyday basis, uh, transformed, tried to transform the character of Ukraine. And Act. Basically, they are now guided and advised not only in situ in Kiev and Ukraine, parts of Ukraine, but actually have got, one can say they are, they have acted as a puppet regime and nothing is done in Kiev without the advice, consent of the United States administration. So that is the recent background, but that could have been left about to come to a wider question which I will re return to later as to why is it that Russia has acted in this manner, in the manner of an intervention which is loosely described as a war because this is as yet is really not a war, it's an intervention and it's an intervention for which so many precedences have been quoted like for example the break up, breaking up of Yugoslavia in Europe without United Nations Security Council approval or resolution. And what they did with that country, united as it was, strong as it was, they broke it up in three, by very similar methodologies of both financial as well as subversion uh, in full swing. So you have asked, I'll come return to your main question, and that is, how is it that, uh, were the Russians sleeping? Yes. The fact is that in 2000, as you know, there was another kind of capture of the so erstwhile Soviet Union by what I describe as a political capitulation of the Soviet Union by just two main actors, Gorbachev and Yeltsin. Acting in concert, yet to the world they appeared to be contending forces. Now, why is that? Because subversion is a milder word for treason, but that can happen to any state. And at that time, the Soviet Union, contrary to what has been propagandized, was a very strong state militarily. Politically, it, was, it had factions in the Politburo, in the party, and its topmost leadership seemed to have eaten the forbidden food. So what happened at that time? What happened? Is it that it was merely a, a change of regime change? No, it was much more than that because it was being controlled from the United States. And this has been documented in books like In the Highest Places by Beschloss and Strobe Talbot. But it was a complete plunder, a plunder which no war has seen, a loot which no war has seen, a loot of all the wealth of Russia in, in enterprises, factories, are was built over a period of many years, since the revolution in particular, all looted and stashed away abroad, both oligarchs through the banking system and through physical presence in, the, in, the, in Russia, the new Russia. At that time, there was a, before, just before this, there was a referendum and in that referendum, most of the constituent republics voted to stay on in the union. But again, a different picture has been projected as far as the media and the world is concerned. Now, what happened then? There was, if one can use the word, utter chaos, utter anarchy. The institutions of the state 
had been dismembered, damaged, subverted, and there was nothing to hold the Russia except one Yeltsin and his then the people around him. Again, advised by the Americans. The Americans are actually present surprising people won't accept it. Were there in the Ministry of Defense. The Americans were there in all major state enterprises, including defense enterprises. Now, how do you call it a regime change? How do you say that the, there was a change? Because this was being run, the, the Russian state was being run again on the advice and consent of its US advisors. When I say US, I am not again going to repeat the word CIA because that's an oft repeated word, but it's, it's common sense that it was. So it became a weaker and weaker and weaker state. Maybe there were elements in its security apparatus who knew, knew the entire background and they decided that we have to wait for a suitable time. And it was only in 1998 and 99 that Yeltsin, by the grace of God, if one can say, was chosen or selected to be the Prime Minister at first, even though he was very reluctant as he had gone on record to say, and then became the President of the President of Russia. But then he was not the elected President of Russia and he had the background because he's got a legal background that and a very fine uh, understanding of the political system of the world. He had to wait for actual election as the President of Russia. In the meanwhile, he had to tackle the oligarchs who had more or less captured all the levers of power. They had captured all the finances. Even the central bank was under the guidance of World Bank. Not very different from what happened in India in 19, May 1991 when the World Bank and IMF compelled us and we willingly signed the structural adjustment program and the structural adjustment loan, which is virtually hand over the entire character, constitution, aims and objectives as given in the constitution of India to a foreign organization. But it's happened in a slow motion in India and continuing of course, it's, that's another story. But the extent of the loot, the extent of the deprivation of the people, the extent of degradation of the women, children and elderly people of Russia is unprecedented. Though China of course claims that they also had gone through their, their century of humiliation or period of humiliation. So here was a person virtually catapulted into position and the first challenge that he had to face was the very existence of Russia because Chechnya became a hotbed of intrigue, of insurgency, of violence, of uh, foreign mercenaries from all over the place, from, from Middle East, that is Central Asia, Saudi Arabia, etc. And he had to battle that and he had to win it because these were terrorists. They were, they were actually let loose. It's like letting loose which is happening like again in Ukraine. Well, he was, I would say his judgment was good. He selected the local, local, local uh, leaders who had who had, had long association with the Soviet Union, where they fought for their country. I've been to Dagestan, so I know a bit about that. And finally, the Chechen insurgency or violence was defeated and he became more stable. Even then you will say that, okay, then after that, why didn't he take care of Ukraine, knowing that what was happening in Ukraine also, politically, militarily, and uh, anti-Russian activity, if I may say, were being coordinated. Well, Russia was simply not strong enough. And if we can draw an example, you see Afghanistan was occupied, invade, invaded, occupied and remained occupied for 20 years. But neither China nor Russia, China of course was having its own honeymoon with the United States at that point of time. And Russia was too weak to intervene in Afghanistan. It was too weak to intervene in Iraq, even though again Iraq was outside the Security Council and on made up reasons, on fake reasons of what is known as the dozier, the chemical weapons dozier, which is a complete fake has been proved. But they could not intervene. They saw the injustice because Russia knew Iraq like, like the palm of its hand. They had been working with Iraq for many years in oil, in the field of energy, in the field of 
military de uh, defense uh, uh, supplies, etc. But they could not intervene. That was followed again by Libya. The attack on Libya, a, a very, very progressive welfare state led by Colonel Gaddafi, who founded the African banking system, who founded the African uh, welfare scheme, joined up, became a leader, but insisted that, like President Saddam, insisted that he shall deal only with the golden dinar and not with the dollar. The whole thing turned on the dollar because dollar is the centerpiece and continues to be the centerpiece now. <laughs> we might come to the conclusion that it is the dollar issue which is triggered off many is the defense of the dollar which is petrodollar which is so important. So, it couldn't do anything. Then this followed it up with Syria. Of course, the Syrians uh, the, by that time Russia was becoming stronger and by about 2012, 2013, 14 they came to the aid of Syria with whom they had enjoyed very, very strong relations for a long time and the Syrian people and the Russian people have certain affinities of being a civilizational force. Now, they have followed with the Yemen, they followed it in Sudan, they followed it in, uh, in Somalia, everywhere around the world. I am not talking about Latin America, I am not talking about Asia. Even in this area, the Americans had their way, the hegemony of the Americans and it is not that the Americans do everything on the spur of the moment. So, again we come back and I will go back a little. In 2018, in spite of tremendous amount of dialogue, communication with Ukraine, and certain complementarities in their economy, the RAND report of 2019, which is a seminal document, it is a seminal document said that they are over, they will do everything in multiple strategies to overextend and imbalance Russia. Not only in the Ukrainian sense, overall in the world, in this way, they were, they were determined, they, because they, I mean, sorry I missed a point, the very lucky thing occurred for Russia, very lucky thing. While the Americans insisted that due denuclearization of Ukraine, they thought Russia is in our pockets and therefore we can we can postpone it a little by we, we, we get busy and sort out Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, the whole world. They it's, it's it's something which is not explained in any American document so far available in the public domain, but they went easy on the issue of denuclearization of Russia. They had set a date earlier of 2010 by which Russia was to be denuclearized. That means all its nuclear capabilities, whether of uranium enrichment or the assembly of weapons or the missile program, ICBM program, etc. They went in, they, they went in for a number of treaties which they have renegade on only in recent months. But that is another issue. So, Putin, coming back to President Putin, if I may say, I do not want to overemphasize Putin. Putin is the president of Russia. So, therefore, one has to name him because he has got all the executive authority uh, in Russia. He went actually on a charm offensive, what I call a charm offensive, very nice to the US presidents, he was very nice to everybody in the West. Of course, he did form a kind of a friendship, but friendship did not come above the state with uh, Angela Merkel. But that is another story, Macron with the predecessor, well, he was playing game. It is only in 2007 that he shocked the Western ladies and gentlemen at Munich Security Conference. And that is the time, if I am permitted to quote his words, amongst his, amidst his lecture or speech at Munich, he said, however, what is a unipolar world? One might embellish this term the unipolar world, but at the end of the day, it refers to one type of situation, namely one center of authority, one center of decision making. It is a world in which there is one master and one sovereign. And at the end of the day, there is per this is pernicious, not only for the all those within the system, but also for the sovereign himself, because it destroys itself from within. When the audience which consisted of presidents, prime ministers, foreign ministers, the whole 
decision making of the West, where the, what West had arrogated itself by a Munich Security Conference is a polite word for discussing security of Europe. But it is at that time that this whole evolving picture that Afghanistan is our responsibility as was said by uh, Tony Blair's advisor saying that Afghanistan is our responsibility, it remains our responsibility. It's not a, it's not a state, it's not the Afghan people don't exist for all practical purposes. The same kind of evolution of NATO was taking place and in fact NATO had already arrived in Afghanistan. What was NATO doing in Afghanistan? It is only 300 miles from Delhi. How is it the great country like India, which is non-aligned, never spoke one word about the... In fact, was ready to contribute divisions and air bases after, during Vajpayee's time as Prime Minister, if you recall. And the chiefs of staff of the Indian military were all in competition to give those pre position or actual use facilities in Adampur, in Ambala, in Kashmir, to these people, the American forces in Vietnam to support when they got very untidy with Pakistan. And they said, we'll reduce you to a stain age, stone age. Pakistan was acting a little too tough with them. And Pakistan has actually been a vassal state of the United States for long, long years. So you can see how NATO, and then after Afghanistan, there was no end to this because people accepted the project for the new American century. It meant that everybody will fall in line. We will create a war on terror. But actually, it's a war of terror because the greater terrorist, the greatest state terrorism was the sovereign himself. So we have to understand, we have to appreciate what was happening in the correlation of forces in the world. What the Russian language in the, the Soviets or the Russians have, uh, have translated the term from Sartneshenia seal. Seal is force, Sartneshenia is relative the relative relation of forces in the world or the relative balance of power. There was no balance of power. It was just one-sided because that is the project for the new American century. And everybody here, all academics here, in fact, even people like, the, this is off the topic a little bit, K. Subrabhanyam, who is regarded as a great strategist whom I know, whom I knew very well, said that when you buy arms from the U.S., you not only buy arms, you buy a relationship the security relationship and he gave the example of Saudi Arabia because he was charged by the BJP government at that point of time to produce a strategic strategy paper 2020 and in that you can see a Subramaniam who was a respected person in his earlier years he was for a independent uh, India was openly encouraging and saying in the official document that we have to have a similar relationship to the U.S. as Saudi Arabia is. I mean, it's, it's beyond my understanding, but that's not the point. So you can see Putin, and at that end, Hu Jintao, who is the chairman of uh, China, uh, General Secretary of the Chinese Party, playing for time. They had realized the folly of aligning themselves by the most favored nation treaty, becoming kind of a NATO of the East, all kinds of things happened in those from 1971 onwards. But there was a realization that you, China is too big to be catching the little finger of the United States. And China's strength was increasing by the kind of diverse strategies of socialism as well as outright capitalism, which they adopted. China, <laughs> Chinese socialism, which uh, with uh, the socialism with Chinese characteristics, we off the bar. So it was only around 2012, also I forgot, I beg your pardon, that in 2004, Russia or Russia and China concluded their very acrimonious uh, past, political as well as border, boundaries, border of the country, in an agreement with China. So that was a starting point of the Russia-China, what shall I say, reconciliation. And coming to the realization together, for different reasons, that they had a person, they had, a, a, they had an adversary, who was not only out to compete with them, com competition is a, is a very polite word, out to 
make sure that they they stayed where they where they were and did not come up to challenge the hegemony of the united states so it is that time about 2012 the say changing situation in syria where the russian and the syrians cooperated as a very 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 in a very close relationship to drive the terrorists isis and all kinds of avatars of the isis out of syria finally about in 2017 2000 so here was a realization that they cannot allow this world to be run by this one sovereign both the countries realized and both the countries had a complementary complementary economy they need for energy they need for high military technology they need for uh, 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 different alignment against uh, against the oppressor against the person who is trying to stop them there and then and that is the time russia had also organized itself into rebuilding regenerating redoing the state apparatus and its defense in machinery and defense effort in a particular way that they came across they saw a clear lead in russia's developing a variety of hypersonic missile systems which are unparalleled which are unmatched which cannot be defended against that realization took a little time and some people thought that russia is adopting a aggressive stand but it is not it is the american military apparatus the pentagon which realized that they have been left without defenses and it's either now or never it's either now or never and that too also through proxy state in a slow kind of subversion and military attack and and i said overextending and imbalancing russia that this whole thing had started coming to a head they had walked out of the abm treaty anti ballistic missile treaty they walked out of the inf they walked out of the star wars or the space treaty the russia america had never signed the space treaty but they did walk out of it then the nato had been extending itself eastwards right through poland hungary romania whatever all the east european states or all, all over the place when they when they realized that they were they had no defenses against hypersonic missiles and because they wanted to threaten russia with placements of missile systems like the tomahawk which has got two variants conventional as well as nuclear warhead and the flight time of tomahawks placed around the borders of belarus and russia is only 3 to 5 minutes to moscow while the flight time of normal us intercontinental ballistic missile is 30 minutes which gives you enough time to evaluate the threat to respond to bring your systems to the highest state of readiness and to respond as deemed appropriate by the defending military that is the russian military when this happened that putin has described this as building missiles bases on his doorstep at his porch you tell me a nation which had lost 30 million to be precise 20 million 8 million in deaths 28 to 30 million in in injury injury maimed people which are sometimes worse than people who died they have passed away destruction of 3000 towns destruction of almost the entire countryside destruction right up to the gates of urals west of urals and to leningrad to stalingrad you know all that a nation which has lost that no nation has lost it took the brunt of the 80% of the military strength of the nazi of nazi germany 80% of the air force 80% of the tanks, 80% of other military hardware, and they are the ones who liberated Europe. Most of Europe was liberated right up to Berlin, which is more than half of Germany, old Germany. They went. In addition, the West, in document form now, this is not known because they had kept this away, in document form, signed saying that the NATO will not be. extended eastward in exchange for the reunification of germany by thanks to gorbachev even that they have gone back on they claim that they don't know they they don't reply these questions they don't allow them to bring it to the public domain that is also emerged but the crucial months that emerged were the months of november december january and february prior to this intervention on 24th of february which is announced by 
President Putin. Now what happened? These two documents, the treaties, the draft treaties or agreements were forwarded at the highest levels to both Europe, NATO, actually NATO headquarters as Stalinburg is there and Washington DC to the President of the United States. You know, such a serious attempt at peace, at cooperative relations in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations, such a serious effort to bring about peace so that everybody can, you know, there is a peace dividend. Such a serious attempt to define that security is indivisible, that it is mutual security that counts. Even that has been treated like a piece of paper and they have not bothered to reply till to date. They made some perfunctory, uh, non-substantive uh, responses at the level of the Secretary of State and so on and so forth have been. While even a person like Rich William Burns, who was ambassador to the US, he is very well associated with the Indo-American uh, civilian nuclear treaty or agreement. He had marked as a younger officer in the embassy in Russia, in Moscow, that these, this is a red line for Russia. You cannot cross, you cannot allow NATO to keep on pushing, keep on pushing till it comes come to their nose, the water comes to their nose. So this is the background what happened in December. Even then the Russians held their peace. They thought somewhere there something will happen. But they did not know that Zelensky is not an independent player. Everything that he says, everything that he does, everything that is formed there is cannot be contrary to the advice from his, from his patrons. You know that uh, 2014 coup itself was supervised, monitored, financed and controlled by Victoria Newland, who was then uh, working for the state and she funded the whole thing and she, she, she has admitted it on video, on tape, on face that this, yes we did that. So we have come to this situation and there was obviously though the Chinese have stated that correctly that we do stand for the sovereignty of all nations, we do stand for the respect of all nations, we stand for peace, we stand for you. But there is a certain tacit understanding in my, end, in my understanding that China will stand with the with Russia, in spite of all the efforts at trying to separate them, because separate they don't stand, they, they won't live, together they will stand. So then what happened? Then three or four very crucial intelligence matters came somewhere near the public domain, as articulated by President Putin in his address to the nation and to the military separately on 24th of February last. That is just 20 days ago, 20, 21 days ago. And he said, one, which has not been, which has been wiped out completely, that the U Zelensky, President Zelensky had actually articulated the aspirations of Ukraine to be a nuclear weapon state. Now, this is not, nowhere is it mentioned in the Indian media, nowhere is it mentioned in any public discourse because it's uncomfortable for them to understand. Can you imagine it doesn't mean as aspiration mean that they'll build their nuclear technology to be a weapon cell. There's no time for that. They, they will either allow, which of course they would allow in NATO, they have no option, or take in most of the almost what you call one screwdriver turn away from those nuclear weapons and pre and put them at pre position sites. Uh, on the borders of Belarus as well as Russia. That is the state. Can anybody allow that? Nobody can allow it. He's pointing a, a gun at your shoulders. So that is the, uh, there are many straws that broke the camel's back in this case. The second straw or the second critical point was these people had built a chain of bio-warfare labs which are completely controlled. In fact, the president had no choice. He could not make a statement. He could not. He could not oppose. He. He. They, they, it was not to. It was all this work was could be de, de, to be done secretly and had been done secretly to develop pathogens and deadly biowarfare 
agents, both for use against their own population, that is in Donbass, that is Eastern Ukraine, for which they were bound to do the otherwise under the Minsk agreement. And if I may divert, President Zelensky has said that he doesn't agree with a single point in the Minsk agreement. Then how do you negotiate? How do you sit? How do you, what, how does one deal with uh, Ukraine? The Americans don't want to deal with Russia on this. The Ukrainian president, who is lawfully, I mean, he is the legal president of the Ukraine, he doesn't want to deal with, uh, with the Minsk agreement. That means he nullifies the Min Minsk agreement. That's a, that's a grave provocation because it was agreed after and signed on by all the leaders of Europe and, and America and everywhere else and, and Ukraine itself. So there is a third one. So here were pathogens to be released into Russia, into the cities, into the into fighting uh, formation and you can see the chaos that would be executed because apart from all the Wuhan virus, Wuhan virus which has been shouted around the world, the fact is that the mother of all laboratories in the world is the fourth electric laboratory and it is 50, 60 years old. It had people from Nazi Germany to assist America in developing the bio warfare there is nothing, there is no other word except dietric, for dietric on that. And they have got a chain of laboratory, but they want to now have laboratories all over the world, so that the blame does not come to them. So there was the second one. Third was the NATO. If NATO, if, 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 the, if Ukraine was to become a member of the NATO, then there are large amount of military obligations fall on it, legal military avenues or roads which would allow NATO to come right up to the borders of Russia, which Russia was, had already said for 20 years, 25 years that these are red lines, you cannot come here, we will not tolerate it. And again reiterated in their negotiating document which they forwarded in December to Europe and to United States. So we have got this provocation. Apart from that, there are lesser ones, there are lesser ones and that is the use of mercenaries. There are mercenaries of the same type that have been visiting uh, Syria. They are visiting of the same type which were there in Chechnya. And how do you expect any state, forget Russia, to allow such a development to take place when you know yourself that India has been taking a very tough stand, irrespective of political parties, with respect to Pakistan-based terrorists outfits, whether in JNK or whether elsewhere. So this is not a, this is a very serious matter. Other minor, I would say relatively minor issues were the release of all weapons in the arsenals to the people of, and that means including the crooks, including the Azov battalions. Thirdly, fourthly, the, uh, the, the distribution of uh, short range, shoulder back, shoulder pack uh, mounted, uh, anti-aircraft weapons, anti-civilian aircraft weapons, military aircraft weapons to people at large. Now what does it mean? It means it is a chaos in the airspace, not only in Ukraine but in the neighboring uh, areas also. And the final, final straw, even though I said that was the first straw that broke the lion's back, is the Donets, is the Donbas offensive which was, they had, the Ukraine government had assembled 40,000 of their troops out of they don't have a very large army, on with tanks, guns, every conceivable weapon to carry out a full-scale large offensive at the time. Previous to that, the families had been moved out of Donbass to execute it at H hour on 25th of February. And this address of, the, of President Putin is on 24th February. So here was something of imminence. And while the Americans have been always talking about Preemptive defense as their, you know, Iraq is preemptive defense. The Iraq is 7,000 million kilometers from there, but they have the right to defend, preemptive. But Russia has no right at all to defend itself. I am not saying, I am not for, uh, people like me are not for legal, uh, for, for sort of uh, moderating or uh, looking over the shoulders on this issue of doctrine of preemptive defense. But please tell me when you have intelligence documents which have got the operational orders to the Yazov battalions who are nothing but Nazis and integrated into the National Guard to say that on 25th at HR they will carry out that full-scale offensive. They had been carrying out, as you know, from 
the United Nations report which officially states that the number of people murdered, civilians, children, women, elderly people is 14,000 from 2014. Then are you going to allow that offensive to take place? So he gives the order for special military operations. I, I think that is, I, I may not, it's not possible for me to cover everything, but I've tried to give you a background of, for people to understand why is it that Russia had to wait for 20 years, as you said, or for even eight years, if you are, if you are more charitable, for this action to be initiated. You know, it's not a declaration of war. The people of, the civilian people will be protected. Only military targets, military assets will be attacked. There could be one or two cases, either self-inflicted wounds or otherwise of certain civilian deaths. But that is not the aim, objective, unstated or stated of the Russian military as far as President Putin's directive is concerned. 